the largest tank here at the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences is our Changing Oceans exhibit, which is home to many unique marine fish. One of the most notable fish in this exhibit is the balloon fish, or diodon holocanthus. Diodon meaning two teeth, and holocanthus meaning entirely prickly. The balloon fish is a type of puffer fish, and you may have heard of puffer fish before. They look pretty defenseless, but they actually have some unique adaptations for when they encounter a threat. Puffer fish have the ability to inhale a bunch of water in mere moments to inflate themselves and provide better protection from predators. Now, how did this inflation ability develop over time? Through a series of unique adaptations that we're going to walk through. When a puffer fish encounters a threat, it is able to gulp down about 35 gulps of water in only about 14 seconds. The ability to do this is because for many marine fish, they have shoulder bones that are very solidly connected to the back of their skulls. But in puffer fish, this connection is hinged so that when the puffer fish inhales a bunch of water, it is able to roll its shoulders back and open its mouth wider to allow it to inhale more water at a faster rate. Once the water is in its mouth, the puffer fish closes its gills and a valve clamps shut right behind its mouth. The puffer fish then squeezes its mouth and the water doesn't go out of its mouth and doesn't go out of the gills. It goes down the esophagus and into the stomach. The stomach is able to expand up to 100 times its original size due to the fact that puffer fish are missing several ribs that would normally limit that expansion. On the outside of the puffer fish, its skin is perfectly suited for this expansion. The puffer fish skin is made up of a bunch of waves and folds that when the puffer fish expands, they even out and become one rigid, solid, taut structure of an almost perfectly round puffer fish, which is very hard for predators to penetrate. Additionally, many species of puffer fish have spines along their bodies that when it's not inflated, they lie flat against them, but when they are inflated, these spines stick straight out, making the puffer fish entirely prickly. But how did these adaptations evolve? Scientists have been able to look at the uh, species of fish that are very closely related to puffer fish, such as the triggerfish. Triggerfish have the ability, um, have a unique ability when they go to hunt sea urchins. When a triggerfish approaches a sea urchin, it can pick up, it pick it up with just just its mouth. It picks it up by one spine, and then the triggerfish is able to swim underneath the urchin and release a jet of water, which flips the sea urchin upside down. And the triggerfish is then able to eat the soft underside of the sea urchin that's not protected from the spines. This water propulsion in triggerfish is extremely similar evolutionarily to the pufferfish inflation ability. The only difference is that the triggerfish keep their mouths open for the entire time, whereas the pufferfish have that valve that clamp shut. Otherwise, all of the nerve impulses and muscle contractions are exactly the same. But we can take this a step farther back into evolutionary history. So before pufferfish and triggerfish branched off, they were very closely similar to the sunfish, which is a large group of freshwater fish. Now, sunfish have the ability to cough up excess mucus or food that is in their mouth or gills. This coughing ability is very similar to the water propulsion technique in triggerfish. So the only difference between the two is that triggerfish contract the sides of their mouth a little bit harder and they open up and, or, and they keep their mouths open for a little bit longer. So from coughing to water propulsion to inflation, the behavior and anatomy of the pufferfish lineage has experienced some dramatic refashioning through evolution. But the original sequence of muscle contractions and nerve impulses is, has barely changed over time. In our tank, the pufferfish doesn't inflate at all because it doesn't experience predation in this tank. It does experience competition, however. So to make sure that the pufferfish stayed healthy, we were able to use operant conditioning to train it to go towards these two black lines on this pole. When it goes towards them and bumps its nose on them, the pufferfish is able to be caught into a basket where it is hand fed. Using this technique, we can make sure that the pufferfish 
is able to maintain a healthy weight so that the next time you come and visit, you can see our happy, healthy pufferfish and marvel at all of its unique evolutionary adaptations.